Brothers and sisters, have you ever thought about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created so many creatures besides mankind? If you look at creation, mankind was not the first of all creation to be brought onto the earth. But instead, there were other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that were created and they have existed and they are around us. Why would Allah do that? Many of us, we enjoy the greenery. We look at the animals. We love to go out in the safaris and we enjoy looking at the different creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them dangerous, some of them not so dangerous. We want to have some pets as well. Have we ever thought why did Allah make those animals? Why are some of these animals halal, some of them haram to consume? Even if you were to slaughter them in the proper way, in the halal way, these animals, some of them can never be halal because a, a pig, for example, no matter how many times you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, you will never be able to consume that pork or the flesh of a swine. Have you thought of why? Why did Allah create a snake that is so dangerous and a lion that subhanallah whilst it looks quite good, whilst it actually attracts people, whilst it can become a source of income because of those who love to go and see and enjoy and whatever else you have, subhanallah, it is a dangerous animal and you cannot consume it. Then have you thought about the other creatures of Allah, some trees, are quite dangerous do you know that have you thought about why Allah creates the other trees you know not very far from my house on the road as I'm leaving my home every morning I see some trees and I notice that once in the year the trees blossom I'm sure you know what jacaranda is you must be having it here too right the jacaranda back at home blossoms once a year and just after it there is another tree that blossoms with a beautiful orange color lovely and i look at it and i tell myself why did allah make this tree and why is it that it only blossoms once a year why why do you have mango trees that only give you fruit once or twice in the year and why do you have a season for every fruit why did allah do that why do we have regions where it's very hot and humid such as mombasa for example although i'm feeling the coolness coming from everyone here mashallah you know they told me we will put a fan on the right and a fan on the left mashallah i saw the brothers on the right and the sisters on the left and the coolness just started coming through alhamdulillah i saw my colleague who is the mc here he had a towel in his hand and he came in for two minutes and i saw him wipe his forehead with the towel immediately i decided to take out my tissues put them in order put in my and I said I'll put it because I don't want to be I did not bring a towel but inshallah I hope I won't use this by the will of Allah but why did Allah create this why why has Allah made diverse colors diverse colors how come you cannot look into the Sun but you can look into the moon have you thought of this in Amazing description by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and amazing how Allah says those who truly believe in Allah, they are the ones who will consider the movement of the day and the night, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything that Allah has made 
they will ponder deeply over it in order to recognize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to understand the plan of Allah for us. If you don't know the plan of Allah, you will never understand your purpose on earth. You need to ask yourself and think about it carefully. Why did Allah make a snake? Subhanallah. Why did Allah create a crocodile? For what? It's a dangerous animal. How many have lost their lives due to crocodiles? How many have lost their lives due to some other creatures of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? You must be wondering, please speak about your topic. It is building bridges. Subhanallah. Right? Well, this introduction is absolutely important. You will never ever be able to understand what is your purpose on earth and you will not be able to understand how to respect differences if you don't know the beauty of the difference. Not starting with human beings, but before humankind came onto the earth. Don't we believe we were created by Allah for Allah to test us in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk. Allah says, it is he who created death and life in order that. The minute he says in order that, he is explaining to you the purpose of creation. Why did he make you? In order to test you in order to test me so you mean i'm on earth so that allah tests me test me with what why should allah test me yesterday someone asked me a question from europe the question was if allah knew that we are going to heaven and hell and if allah has determined the whole future why did he make us why didn't he just put us where we were belonging in the first place so i told him i said when you have a court case, is it fair for the judge to just say, right, I'm jailing you without proving you the, or to you the evidence. You did this, you did that, you did this. Look at what you did. The evidence is against you. You now deserve this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not impose on us certain matters. He has given us a choice regarding you are sitting here. It was in the knowledge of Allah. It was decreed by Allah indeed. But he gave you the capacity and the choice. Subhanallah. He will not punish you for what you did not have a choice regarding. If something happened beyond your choice, say for example, something disastrous happened. You were driving according to the speed limits and suddenly someone decided to break the limits or to, they made a mistake. They bumped into you and you were injured. You are not going to be asked, why were you injured? That man is going to be asked, why were you driving recklessly? So that was not in your capacity. It's qadr. It taqdeer meaning it is destiny. It was destined that I was going to go through this. Indeed, I had no role to play. Allah will not question me where I didn't have a choice. But where Allah's given you a choice, you chose. Allah holds you responsible. That does not mean he doesn't know what was going to happen. This is why when we talk about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many of you would obviously know I'm just repeating it. The knowledge of Allah encompasses many aspects to show the greatness of Allah. Allah knows the past. He knows the past. Yakunu is mudara in the Arabic language. It is present and future. So Allah knows the past. He knows the present and he knows the future. But there is something more than that that Allah knows. Which is amazing. Allah knows that which was not going to happen and will not happen. If it were to happen, how it would have happened. Allah knows it already. Can I give you an example from the Quran? In Surah Al-Kahf, and I'm sure we read it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about certain incidents that happened between Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr. Al-Khidr. And Allah speaks about one of them where young boy was killed by Al-Khidr. And Musa alayhi salam says, Aqatalta nafsan zakiyyatan bi ghayri nafs. How can you kill this man without any reason? No purpose. We are not allowed to kill just because you might have had a disagreement or a difference. You have no right to take away the life that Allah gave. Who gave life? Allah. How can you take away life that Allah gave? 
if Allah wants, He will take that life away. He has more power than you and I. Subhanallah. So Al Khidr says, Look, you don't know what I've done. Just leave it. It was from Allah inspired. Subhanallah. And then he explains that had this child grown older, he would have been a source of misfortune for his parents and a source of sadness, a source of perhaps harm to his parents. Therefore, Allah chose to take him away at an early age to avoid his parents suffering and him to actually end in a bad way. So it was the blessing of Allah. What I learned from this, the biggest lesson is Allah knows that which was never going to happen because Allah knew that this child is going to go now. But Allah knew if we gave him life, which we were not going to do anyway, but if we did it, he would have turned out to be X, Y and Z. That's the knowledge of Allah. So if you did not come here today where you would have been, Allah knows. But Allah also knew that you were going to come here. It is so amazing that sometimes it confuses the mind. You need to sit and think about it. You need to sit and think. That's the knowledge of Allah. He is the owner of all knowledge. So when Allah says, I created you to test you, what did he say? Testing about what? He says, to test you who from amongst you has better deeds. To test you who from amongst you has better deeds. That's all. Allah says, I created death and life in order to test you who has better deeds. Which means, I need to work as best as I can to please Allah. In the meantime, there will be, you know, when there is a test, what happens? What happens in a test? You go into your exam room and you are tested mathematics. So do they just test you what you want? Everything will be nice, smooth, sweet, calm. No, you will work hard. You will go into the exam room at the right time with the right uniform. At the, in the right place, sitting in the correct position, making sure that you don't copy, you don't cheat. You are looking at your paper. You are praying that it's going to be easy. You are praying that it's going to be easy. And you start answering. The first question, one plus one, mashallah. You know the answer, two. Very easy, right? It is so easy that if you were asked that question for O or A levels, you might think there is a catch here. You might think there is a catch. Imagine you come for your examination O level. First question, one plus one. You just look at each other. Like when MC almost gave away my date of birth. First time in my life I've seen someone, mashallah, may Allah forgive us all, who introduces a speaker with his date of birth. I almost choked, mashallah. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah, tabarakallah. Just as well he didn't give the year. <laughs> but I can let you in on a secret. I can let you in on a beautiful secret. I have, and my colleagues do know this, I have two of my daughters are actually married. So you can guess how old I am, inshallah, just as well. And that's not a lie, that's, a, that's the truth. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. I'll, if you were to enter an exam and you hear something that is quite simple, you will be a little bit confused to say, how come this is so easy? Allah says, in life, we will test you with ease. It's a test. When we give you, it's a test. When we take away from you, it's a test. Everyone, now, now I'm getting to my topic, okay? Everyone and everything that we have put around you is part of your test. You have snakes as your test. You have giraffes as your test. You have kittens and cats that you may choose to be your pets as snakes. You may have birds as pets as snakes. Those which are, sorry, as, as, as uh, a test. You may have that which is harmful as a test. That which is beneficial as a test. All these are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your brothers were chosen by Allah as a test for you. Your sisters chosen by Allah. You did not choose who's going to be your brother or sister. So much so you did not choose your father or your mother. That's your test. Why? Because Allah created you different from everything and everyone. You are unique. You are you. You are so different that your thumbprint, your iris print will be completely different even from your own mother and father.